The robe, motherfucker. The robe. The robe. You gotta have the fucking robe. The robe, motherfucker. You gotta have the robe. So, Automaton, holy shit, um, Automaton was a project that I came up with, sort of a filler, if you will, in between writing for Isolated Antagonist, which is my other project with uh, Glenn, um, who has been my fucking best friend, uh, not my fucking friend. Ha 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 motherfucker! My best friend for seven fucking years. Um, seven whole years. We've been just the best of buds. Um, just incredible, you know? Um, we've, the thing about me and Glenn is we've never had a fucking argument in the seven years. We never had a a real, a real disagreement. You know, we've had opinions about stuff that we don't agree on. Um, we've had, you know, kind of in between quiet times, you know. Uh, we've had some difficulties, you know, like all friendships do. And uh, that's important. That's actually healthy in a friendship. If you don't have any of those, then you're doing something wrong in a friendship. Because... There's, all, there's always going to be fucking uh, little, you know, disagreements about stuff, uh, uh, opinions that you don't agree on, or just, you know, kind of quiet times in between those friendships. And um, I think during this latest uh, Isolate Antagonist release that we just released, or going to release now, um, there was kind of some difficulties uh, after the fact, you know, during the uh, the post uh, production and the, the, the releasing of it. But that wasn't our fault. It was a totally different fault. I'm not going to mention what that fault was, who it was, or what it was, but you know, uh, things happen. You know, things happen. Shit happens. So, Automaton is kind of my escape from all that shit. Or was the escape for all that shit, right? Uh, I wanted to create something that, you know, I could sort of release all that shit from, you know? Uh, and not just that, just to, just to have my own full creative outlet for it, right? Um, and Tomaton was that. I created that in between from writing uh, you know, between Isolate Antagonist and my other hundred fucking solo projects that I have going on right now. Of course, that's an exaggeration, but you know what I mean. Uh, six projects I have going on right now, and it's just fucking crazy. So, um, but I think Automaton is, I hate to say it's more important than my other projects, uh, I'm not I'm not including uh, uh, isolate antagonist in this because that's a whole separate entity, but I think automaton is the more important of the pro of my projects that I'm working on right now. Um, but it it's not it's not important it's not more important than any other it's it's a weird situation it's a fucking weird situation. Um, because it's not more important than my other projects. My other projects are just as important. They're different from Automaton. You know, I've got one project that's progressive rock, progressive metal.
I got one project that's uh, industrial death metal. Shit, I got so much shit. Uh, pure agrotech. I'm, I'm working with a band that's pure agrotech, industrial. Um, you know, I'm, we're working on, uh, I'm working with my buddy, Chris, who's uh, the head of the record label that I'm on, uh, Machine Man Records. Uh, we're, we're coming up with a concept right now for a project that we're working on, which is going to be kind of like noise industrial, if you will. Um, so I got so much fucking shit on my plate that it's just nice to kind of step away from all that shit and write something that's aggressive, science fiction, to kind of escape from all that shit. You know, to escape from it. And that's what Automaton is. And that's why I created it. Um, the other thing is, is that Automaton... The reason why it's so important is because Automaton has taken me more effort, has taken the most time out of any, has taken more soul than any of my other projects combined. Um, <laughs> mean that in a bad way you know it's it's very very difficult to explain this kind of stuff because you know you don't really think about it until like later you know uh, what's going on you know and I've released I released this will be the fifth album from Automaton uh, the upcoming album coming out um, will be released uh, Sometime in the future. Uh, it's already done. Um, it's the fifth uh, full album, but it's the sixth all-time album. Because I did a, uh, I did a, an EP, a four-song EP. Um, that's kind of a throwback, uh, a tribute, actually. A throwback to old... Uh, late 70s, early 80s, Gary Newman. Right? Um, and I kind of wanted to kind of pay tribute to him because he's a huge influence on my music. Huge influence. Um, but I didn't want to do cover. Like, I didn't want to make a full, like, EP of just Gary Newman covers. Because I don't, I personally don't like covers. Uh, for me to do a cover, it's got to be a, a band or a song that really hits me deep. It really hits me deep and that I enjoy, that I would enjoy playing and listening to it here and there. Um, myself. Uh. But I don't like doing covers. I I was never a cover guy, you know. I I just don't. I don't. I I don't agree with cover bands. You know, it's like why do that when you can create your own original fucking music, you know? And while I know that it's almost impossible to be a hundred percent original nowadays, because everything seems like it's fucking already done. So, but. You can be original and create your own music, you know, while having those influences, you know, kind of pour into those, influ those, you know, those influences and stuff like that in your own music. But I don't agree with cover bands. I don't agree with covers in general. Like, it's, it's cool to do one here and there, you know, but I'm just not a cover guy. I just never was, you know. That's why I kind of cringe when I see cover bands playing these shows and getting paid fucking absorbent amounts of money, you know, and I just don't fucking agree with it, so, 
of course that's just my opinion that's that's no no right away you know right or wrong way about it you know that's just my own opinion so I wanted to do this album this EP as a tribute to Gary Newman right but not do covers I did one cover on the EP and three originals to me that's perfect you know do a tribute for his style and then do a full tribute you know with a cover song perfect can't go wrong there the albums the whole concept of automaton really is basically my fascination with uh, robots uh, basically uh, androids synthetic humans and the whole science fiction part of it is just I've, I'm a huge sci-fi nerd first of all right huge sci-fi nerd so to me this is this was a great opportunity for me to write something write a story and while I'm not a fucking, you know, New York Times bestseller or whatever, I I just wanted to do this story. And it just kind of came out, you know. I think one of, one of my all-time interesting, uh, oh, not my, but one of the most interesting sci-fi robot movies, in my own opinion, is iRobot. Um. And I like it because, you know, it's like robots going fucking crazy, right? Against humans and shit. And I like that concept. So I wanted to take that concept and make something of my own with that, you know. Um, you know, while I like Blade Runner and that whole thing, I, I think that... Uh, the iRobot theme is more of the direction I wanted to go. Um, and there there are some great movies with, with androids in them, like Alien, the whole Alien franchise have androids in them and shit like that. So Terminator, of course. But this story is basically about the mistreating of these machines. You know, um, humans making a fucking mockery of them or just poorly treating them. And the whole idea is, is that these synthetics, these robots, have fucking emotions and feelings. You know? They're programmed that way. So the whole idea was, what if, you know, these robots were wi uh, wired? <laughs> wired wrong right um the humans programmed them to have emotions and feelings um but they didn't expect it to have it to take a toll like it did so um these robots are being mistreated by these humans you know like rats in a cage right being experimented on in harsh ways so the story goes is that these robots have had the fuck enough. I've had enough, right? Um, and you kind of, to write the story, I kind of put myself in the mind frame of these robots. Like, how would I feel if I was being treated like this by humans, <laughs> right? Um, so they end up just going haywire. And the laws of robotics are non-existent at this point. They've been wiped out. Um, and so they don't have to follow these laws of robotics, right? Um, however, the newer album, the, the, the upcoming album that's coming out, um, which I'm not going to say the name of yet, but um, deals with one 
law, one new law of robotics that the humans have created, and that's um, preg human pregnancy. Robots cannot harm a woman who is carrying a child, right? So it deals in that sort of situation. Uh, of course, these the humans don't realize this and thinking that this robot is just fucking mindlessly killing everyone on the on the, the spaceship, right? But what it's actually trying to do is protect this pregnant woman who's a crew of the uh, a salvage team, right? So it's a it's a a story of misunderstanding in a way. So I thought that was kind of an interesting story. Um, and while this robot in this album is programmed um, to kill these humans because of, or the humans didn't program this, this, you know, feeling or this action, but the other robots created their own programming. So while this robot is trained by the other robots to kill humans because of what they've done, you know, the mistreat, the mis, the way they mistreated the robots, right? Um, they, this robot's just killing people, but it's protecting this pregnant woman, and they don't know that. <laughs> so, it's not until the end of the album where, you know, some of the crew member realizes that holy shit. This robot is fucking protecting her, not fucking trying to kill her. So, it's kind of a it's kind of a a huge story, a huge concept, uh, spanning five fucking full albums, right? Or six actually, because the EP actually ties into the full stories, if you will, right? Um, now, originally, it was only going to be a four album story, and that's it. It was going to end at Subcoma. But I, I, I was thinking, I'm like, I can't end this fucking story. I can't end it. Because there are, are a lot of different sto like different things that I can talk about that tie into the story. You know? And it's impossible to stop. So, um, with this upcoming album, it, it plays right after Subcoma, basically. Uh, and that's where the whole concept of the story came. The whole idea. of Automaton is I've got shows planned. Now there's nothing confirmed yet, but I would like to play these songs live in a live environment. Um, and you know I'm gonna start off you know with easy songs to play. You know songs that I'm totally familiar with and I know how to play blindfolded, right? Um, and songs that are, you know, kind of catchy for the listeners. But, you know, I kind of want to bring this to the people live. You know, and so I, we've got plans to do that in the summer. Uh, and if you're watching this later, you know, this, we're now in uh, mid to late winter, so um, it's gonna happen in the summer, if anything, because I'm practicing now, but, uh, uh, a friend who's actually, um, interested in doing the, the keyboard parts, uh, the leads for the, uh, the set for me, which is awesome, I think, uh, he's from, uh, this band called, uh, Decent News, or Descent News, correct me if I'm wrong, Eddie. Eddie, that's his name, Eddie. Good good guy. Awesome dude. Um, correct me if on that pronunciation, because I don't fucking know. I should know that, because this is kind of a documentary, but... Um, awesome dude, awesome music. I, I, you know, I appreciate that he wants to help out. Um, 
And I've I've worked it so in case Eddie can't make a show or you know he has other endeavors that he wants to do that you know I'll just do it myself you know with backing tracks uh, and be playing guitar and vocals live now that that is extremely extremely frowned upon with fans um, in the metal scene but I kind of don't really consider myself pure metal because it, it is it has elements of industrial it has elements of you know electronic science fiction all that stuff right so I don't really consider this project full just full on metal you know so even though it's frowned upon to have one guy up there with backing tracks and only playing like one live thing I really don't give a shit I don't give a shit what people think about that I'm doing I'm doing my job I'm giving people the experience Technically, I am a one-man band, so it wouldn't make sense for me to have a full band back behind me, because I am a one-man band. Godflesh is like that. They have a guitarist and a bassist. The rest are backing tracks. So, to me, it, it won't bother me. It doesn't bother me that if people have a pissy fit about that, because I don't give a fuck. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, right? Um, so... You know, there, there really is no reason to have a pissy fit about it anyway. Um, as long as you're not... See, my, my thing is, as long as you're not fucking lip-syncing or playing fake on the stage, as long as you're playing something live, you know, that's, that's what's important to me, really. Um, that's what I... That's what my job is as automaton, you know? And uh, if people don't like that, they don't have to come to the shows, basically. Uh, so, this whole thing is gonna be fucking kick ass, man, I tell ya. Also, uh, the future of automaton is that I wanna write a novel on this story. I want to put it in book form. I'd love to put it in movie form, but fuck if I have that money to do that, right? Um, but I think I definitely want to put it in book form sometime in the distant future sometime, you know? Uh, and, uh, shit. I think that would be really cool to do. You know? I've talked to people about that. You know? Um, talk to many I've got many opinions by people and they say go for it and that's what I'm gonna do in conclusion there are a lot of things that I want to do with automaton and you know my other solo projects there's a lot of shit I want to do but it's just hard because you know all the shit costs a lot of money and you know and that's that's what I don't get about the music industry in total right um it costs so much fucking money to make, you know. If if that's if you if you don't have your own home studio, um, you know, it, it's incredibly tough for the average schmo to get into music and to get into an instrument because it fucking costs so much money. It costs so much money to make an album. You know, thousands of dollars in a, in a professional studio, and even if you want to do it yourself, you got to pay the hundreds and thousands of dollars for your own gear. Software alone is like three hundred dollars uh, for a decent DAW system, and you know, a decent 
audio computer will run you around like $2,500. And that's just for the production side of things, never mind the instruments themselves. You know? Shit, it, nowadays, a good guitar costs like eight hundred to twelve hundred fucking dollars. You know what I mean? It's like, what the fuck? You know it. And most of these guitars aren't worth. Most of this gear is not worth the value of what they're asking for, right? It's basically markups and uh, uh, huge ass profit margin. And I, I think greed plays a huge part in pricing things. Greed. And that's why it's so fucking hard for just an average dude or a kid even to get into music production and writing or to learn an instrument because everything fucking costs so much money. And I hate that. Hate that. Um, I typically buy inexpensive gear from the start from the from the start none of these guitars that I have in the back cost more than five hundred dollars right my amp rig doesn't cost more than seven hundred dollars right why because you can get inexpensive gear and turn it into a good sounding piece of equipment, right? That's my main guitar up there, right? That's my main doohickey, right? That's what I write with, and that bass, right? However, that guitar right there, I basically customize it myself. I put um, Seymour Duncan actives in there. Uh, the blackouts. Uh, I, I put new wiring in there, new pots, everything. My own custom paint job. And th all that didn't cost more than what? 150 bucks. And now it sounds just as good as one of the higher end Ibanez guitars out there, right? Even though that's a Dean. That's a Dean. That's not an Ibanez. That is an Ibanez. Um, but, you know, you get inexpensive shit, tweak it to become awesome sounding, basically. That way you're not spending, you're not really spending thousands of dollars right out the gate for something that's not worth it, right? So, that's my take on that shit. I hope y'all enjoyed this little documentary about all about automaton. Um, it was fun to do, and I hope you guys have some insight as to what this project's all about and what's to come, what's about fucking just and about myself in general. So I look forward to seeing all of you at future automaton shows and. Subcoma is now out in digital stores. Um, you can go to Machine Man Records on Facebook. Just type in Machine Man Records and uh, search it. And there you go. You can buy my shit. Yeah. I appreciate all the support from all of you. And all the future support from future fans. So, take care, everyone. Have a good one. Yes. Automaton.